Um, I'm a big proponent of early success in anything, especially in gardening. So we're going to talk a little bit today about gardening 101, learning to garden, what to plant, all that stuff, but also about starting a garden at a school, the very first thing that you do. Um, when you're working on your, your new garden project, start small. We're going to get into starting small in just a little bit, but, but there's some ways that you can design what you're doing to ensure that you've got some early success. It's really important for kids and for you all. You get that early success, you eat something out of the garden, and then you want to keep doing it. But if you, if you start off with a couple failures, it's hard to push through and get to that success. So engineer it for early success. Make it fun, because it's going to be really important to keep you going. Starting small, if you've got a garden that you're already working in at a school, raise your hand. Okay, so that's a huge chunk of you. If, you're, if you want to start a garden project and you're here right now, um, so we've, we've got some of those here. My advice to you guys is start smaller than you think. Um, in, in March, it is beautiful outside. Everybody wants to be a farmer in March, right? It's fantastic. In August, Nobody wants to be a farmer. Farmers don't want to be farmers in August, right? So it's hot. There's going to be weed pressure in August. There's going to be bug pressure. Um, no, my, my advice is in, in March, know that August is coming, okay? If you start too small, what you, what's going to happen is your first year, you're going to be frustrated a little bit by the lack of space. And in the second year, you're going to expand. And that's great. If you start too big, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to throw up your hands and you're going to give up. So both of them, you're a little bit frustrated, but the outcomes are totally different. One, you're, you're excited and you're, you have a sustained garden program. The other one, it was a big failure. Now you just got wooden boxes with weeds growing out of them, right? So start small. Um, this picture reminds me to tell you to start really small if you need to. If you're at a school, if you're a teacher, and you've gone to your principal and just thrown out the idea and they totally blew you off, do it anyway. Okay? But don't bring out a tiller one day when no one's looking. <laughs> Go out to your windowsill and grow some herbs or grow some lettuce plants. Do something that moves you towards eventually having your garden that you want to have. Um, so this is one example. You can grow herbs on a windowsill, a sunny window. That's easy. Uh, but it can be really, really simple. It can be talking to your students, your kids, about what parts of the plants do we eat? Do we eat the roots of this one? Do we eat the leaves? Do we eat the fruit? It can be all kinds of things. I mean, all, every curriculum I've ever seen, I used to teach second grade, every single curriculum has some kind of plant part identification, right? So use that as your springboard to move towards food gardening and eating food out of a garden. Um, little things you can, I mean, t out on the playground, dig in the dirt, smell it, right? That was part of your, raise your hand if you like the smell of dirt, that was one of the things. I mean, get kids to be doing that kind of stuff. Dirt under their fingernails is okay. Find a worm, right? Hold the worm, that kind of thing. It's pretty simple stuff. Another easy activity is um, these CD cases. You guys remember those? Anybody remember CDs? Also every, man, that got more ooze than my son did. Um, also, every curriculum that I've seen for elementary kids has a seed germinating. Put it in a plastic bag, you wrap a paper towel around a little bean seed, you tape it to a window, right? Well, you can't see very much in that one. Um, so these CD cases, you put a little soil in them, but look at how much you can see of the root and everything. It's a pretty simple way to do it, um, but it gives you a lot better visual, I think. So that's, again, you don't need to have a tiller to be able to do this. You don't need to have permission from your school to be able to do this activity. Anybody can do this.